Hello, I'm in Corfu and in a couple of hours I'll be flying back to London's Heathrow Terminal 5 on British Airways Airbus A321 Neo product in economy class. I flew down with BA a few days ago and made a video about that and I wouldn't normally cover a return leg where it covers the same carrier, the same plane and the same class of service. But given current circumstances, I thought it would be worth seeing how Greek airports are covering things and also what the arrivals process into Heathrow looks like these days. So stick with me. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've traveled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to the channel so you can come with me. Although I had planned to take the bus back to the airport, the eight euro saving versus taking a taxi wasn't sufficient to offset the sweaty inconvenience of lugging my stuff to the bus stop. Corfu Airport has a fairly bad reputation. It's not large by any means, and the low cost holiday flights tend to depart in clumps, which requires reps to buffer passengers at the curbside to prevent overcrowding inside the terminal. Not such a problem under the current circumstances, but as BA's flights are spread throughout the day, it's never really a problem for them. There was still a healthy queue for both regular and priority check-in, so as I only had hand luggage and already had a boarding pass on my phone, I skipped that pleasure and headed straight for security, which may have been a tactical error, as I'll explain later. As you can see, there's quite a lot of unused capacity at the airport right now. As usual, filming security was prohibited, but it was quick and very efficient. Security takes you into the departure lounge and into the duty-free shop, to be precise. I'll talk more about this in a future video, but duty-free is a quite misleading term in the world of European single markets. A handful of products I spot-checked were about the same price as my local Asda. I think a lot of people assume the prices will be good, as they don't buy those products regularly and have been conditioned to assume that the duty-free phrase is an indicator of value, which it often isn't within Europe at least. The UK government recently announced the return of duty-free booze and fags after the Brexit transition period is over at the end of the year, so that's something to look forward to. This is a somewhat unusual flight review. The oddness starts now with the lounge review. There isn't one. It's not that BA is too stingy to pay for its customers to access one, which does still happen in a handful of outstations. It's that there isn't one at all at the airport, which is very, very unusual. A new company recently took over the running of the facility, and a lot of building work is in progress, which I'm sure will eventually lead to the construction of a lounge. But for now, there's nada. I must have been suffering from some form of heat stroke from my time in Corfu, but I didn't work this out until I was through security. It's such an unusual occurrence that the possibility hadn't entered my mind. Usually in these circumstances, BA will give its premium customers a voucher at check-in to use at the concessions, but as I'd skipped check-in, there was definitely no voucher for me. This was the pre-Schengen departure lounge. For those not familiar, Greece is in a region of the European Union which shares a common external border called the Schengen area. Travel within that area for all nationalities can be done without passport checks. But anyone departing to a non-Schengen country, such as the UK, needs to have their passports checked. This is often a separated process from the security checkpoint and it can be a bit of a lottery as to whether there's anything to entertain you in the lounge past the passport check as you generally can't see. And this part of the lounge was a Starbucks and a bakery sandwich shop. Masks were required inside the terminal and there were a couple of strolling security guys reminding people to wear them. On this occasion, there was actually just as much to entertain you after the passport check as there was before. Another Starbucks, another bakery, and a few other outlets were under construction. Most of the flights departing were heading to the UK, so it was also considerably busier, so much so that it was actually quite tricky to find a seat. Our plane today was an Airbus A321neo, a relatively new plane in BA's fleet, having been delivered in early 2019. NEO means new engine option, which has significantly more efficient engines than previous variants. More on this later. As for the outbound flight, 
boarding was done strictly by row number, which meant that the usual priority boarding system was not in operation. We enjoyed one last blast of Corfu's beautiful weather as we walked to the plane. I was quite surprised that they allowed us to pass so close to another manoeuvring plane, but no one got sucked into any engines, so I'm sure it was all safe. One point to make was that no one in Corfu Airport seemed concerned with whether we'd completed the UK passenger locator form. I'd had to complete the equivalent document for Greece on the way out, which had been thoroughly checked by BA twice before boarding, as I suspect the onus for compliance has been passed to BA by the Greek government. I can only conclude that the UK government has not passed any onus for compliance onto the airlines that bring passengers to the UK. A hygiene pack was distributed on boarding, containing hand sanitising gel and a wet wipe. It's quite interesting how the seat design changes around row 14. Hadn't noticed that before. Having gone right to the back on the flight out, I decided to take advantage of my gold status of BA and pre-booked an emergency exit row for the return. To be specific, I booked seat 27F, which has the best legroom of any plane in BA's short haul fleet. My 31 inch thigh bones were in heaven, even if the view out of the window was, well, there wasn't a window, so there was no view. So no window means no takeoff footage. So here's a simulated representation of that part of the flight. Our flight today took us up the Adriatic, over Venice, into Switzerland, through France, into England overhead Rye, before approaching Heathrow from the east. Not that I knew any of that at the time, because I had no window. I did manage quite a nice nap, though. Unlike the outbound flight, my underseat power had not been ripped out and worked well. Once again, there was a snack pack for all economy passengers, containing crisps, biscuits and some water. The emergency exit row has a table in the armrest, but as I didn't want to disturb my sleeping neighbour, I explored my snack pack on the floor. I told you this wasn't the normal flight review. In my review of the outbound flight, I talked about how BA had tinkered with the seating on this plane variant, reducing the size of the rear galley and leaving two tiny lavatories. BA's seating densification was so efficient that it is suggested that it's messed up the plane's weight balance. If the plane isn't full, they can't seat passengers in the rear two rows for fear that the plane will tip back after landing when the fuel tanks are empty or if the cargo has been loaded unfavourably. Those two rows were certainly unavailable to reserve when I booked. This flight was pretty full though, so the seats were occupied. And don't worry, BA does manage the weight balance very carefully so the plane won't tip over. So we landed. Disemplaning was done by row and was well observed, so I emerged into Heathrow's Terminal 5, interested to see what precautions were in place given the ongoing pandemic. And I found nothing. A few notices and what looked like an attempt to create a temperature screening point, which was unmanned when I passed. No announcements, no people in hazmat suits handing out leaflets, no videos playing explaining what the rules were in the UK, just the usual automated passport gate and a straight walk out through a deserted customs point. I'd completed a passenger locator form as was required, but at no point was it requested, inspected or validated. I don't know whether there was a behind the scenes systems check done with BA, but at no point did I interact with any human, which I have to say I found extremely poor and a little disconcerting. So having had my mask on for over five hours at this point, removed only briefly when chowing down on my snack pack, it felt great to rip it off for that precious few minutes before the transfer bus back to the long-term parking lot arrived. The guy coming up in the car forgets to say this, so can I encourage you at this point to like the video if you enjoyed it, to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. So over to the guy in the car. So another flight done maximum possible score for legroom and the minimum possible score for views out of the window. This video's loss in terms of uh, wing footage was made up for my personal gain by being able to get a good hours kip on the flight. Again another solid BA performance, 
good crew, snack pack was welcome. There was actually a second drinks service, although they sort of jogged down the aisle, telegraphing that they weren't particularly keen on stopping. And they were actually so quick that I completely missed it and only saw them in the rear view mirror, so to speak. But there you go, another flight done and uh, a good trip made. So thanks for watching and I will see you all again soon. Goodbye.